Hey, learn audio engineering. In this video, I'll show you the differences between open back and closed back headphones so that you can decide which is best for you and your home studio. The two headphones that I'll be using for this comparison are the Bayer Dynamic DT880s, which retail for around $150 American, and the Sony MDR7506 Professional Closed Back Headphones, which retail for around $115 American. So both of these are over-the-ear headphones with very different applications, which we're gonna get to first. So to start, these are the Sony closed backs. These are a staple in professional studios, and you're gonna see them everywhere because they're very sensitive in the mid-range, and they also give a good amount of detail in the high end, which is gonna allow you to notice fine details about a performance when you're recording. So things like hiss, noise, and other unwanted sounds that may be present in a faulty cable or in the room, like a furnace, is gonna be easily detected using these headphones. And this is in part due to their closed back design. There's a plastic covering that surrounds the ear, which provides more isolation than the open backs, which makes them ideal for recording as they won't add extra bleed into the microphone that you're using to record. They're much quieter on the outside. And we're gonna see that in our click test. So when you compare this to the open back Bayer Dynamics, which are much more high-end listening and mixing headphones, these feature much less isolation. In fact, on first use of these headphones, it's amazing how well you can actually hear the space around you. It doesn't make you feel as sealed off and isolated from the rest of the world like the closed backs do. And although this makes them more comfortable for the listener, they're less ideal for recording as the sound of these headphones will bleed into the room and will add extra noise into any close by microphones. In fact, getting too close to a microphone with open backs can actually cause feedback. I'm gonna see if they, if they actually feed back. Something that I heard is that these open back headphones have the tendency to feed back if it gets really close to the microphone, so we're gonna test that. These are only semi-open, I should mention, so we're gonna see. I can't get it to feed back. There it is. Okay, yeah. Yeah, be careful. So generally these headphones are reserved for mixing or for casual home listening in an isolated environment, which is also due to the open back design tending to be more bulky. It's not something that you really wanna be carrying around with you on the bus or at the library, especially with the over six foot long cable. So now we're gonna talk about the sound experience of both of these headphones. Though the overall sound print will depend on the specific model, there are some general characteristics in both of these designs to keep in mind when you're looking to buy your next set of headphones. So the open back design is often hailed as having a much wider stereo image, a more outside and around the head experience. This also allows frequencies to have more breathing room to resonate outside the headphone, which can improve the detail of low end response. Now this model in particular happens to be a little bit bright with a pronounced peak around 9K, sometimes referred to as the Bayer peak. Now this model uh, happens to be more comfortable for long-term use as well. So although that Bayer peak can make them sound a little bit harsh and sibilant, the actual design of the cups is kind of like a velvet and it's really nice to keep on your head for an extended period of time. And then we have the closed backs, which are much more narrow and inside of your head sounding, like the music is coming from your own thoughts, which can also allow you to focus on the more technical aspects of the music, which is very useful when recording. Because the main application of these headphones is studio tracking, you're gonna get a greater amount of precision to the monitoring to pick up all those fine details of the recording, while also being suitable for public listening if you're out and about, if you're at the library, you're on the bus, uh, as long as you're okay with dealing with the 10 foot cable. Whereas open backs have the absolute uncanny ability of transporting the band into the listening space that surrounds you with the performance. It feels like the band is actually in the room that you're in. And this is a pleasing benefit for mixers who really value the wider, more spacious imaging that this design provides. But it's absolutely awful for listening in shared company or around microphones as the sound is gonna bleed into the room and it's gonna bother other people or ruin the isolation of a recording. 
So what are your thoughts? What did I miss? And what should I cover next? In the next video in this series, we're gonna be discussing the difference between low impedance and high impedance headphones. Hey, a quick word from my hotel room in Inglewood. I've been in Anaheim, California and Los Angeles for the last week attending the NAMM show and I've been getting into a lot of adventures, a lot of really cool stuff and I'm gonna be sharing that with you guys over the next couple weeks. So yeah, stay tuned for that and I'll see you guys in the next one. You give in, you give out You forgot what we were talking about